Hey, I'm Nate Savage, and I know that a lot of guitar players out there struggle with making bar chords, even to the point maybe where they give up on trying to make them all together. And this can be because bar chords just are initially kind of hard to get into. So in this lesson, I have a three-step process that's gonna help you see success with making bar chords. And along the way as we go through this, I have some technique tips that are gonna help make your bar chords sound great too. So grab your guitar and follow along. And if you implement these three steps over the next few weeks in your practice time, I guarantee you that you will see progress with your bar chords. Step number one is to simply get your bar strong before even trying to make the full bar chord shape. A lot of guitar players kind of skip this step and go right into making the full shape and they wonder why they have trouble getting a good sound out of it. So taking some time to develop your technique and strength for your bar is really important and I'll show you what I mean. I have some technique tips for you that'll really help you. So our goal here is to create a clamp with our index finger and our thumb and get that really strong and get some good technique so all of the notes when you bar something are very clear with no buzzing. And kind of the first technique tip is what I call horizontal finger placement. And that just means get your finger right behind the fret. If you go towards the middle of the fret or towards the back, that can create some buzzing. It's a lot harder to get clean notes when you're in the middle or towards the back of the fret. So right behind the fret, tip number one. And as you work on this technique, you're gonna be strengthening your bar too, right? And kind of tip number two for technique is vertical finger placement. And we all have these creases on our fingers that can make it hard to get a good sound out of all the strings. So you have to kind of play with where you put your finger vertically too, and find the place that works best for you. Mine's about right there. I've seen some people that have a lot more of their finger hanging over the fretboard like that. But that's another thing you're gonna wanna experiment with. The third thing is to make sure to bring your elbow into your body. That gives you a better angle of attack for making this bar and getting it really clean. If your elbow's out here, you're gonna have a hard time pressing down on the strings. And once you bring that in, it's a lot easier, and the weight of your arm can kinda help to make those strings really clear. There are two more little technique tips that I wanna give you for making a bar. And the first one is don't kink your wrist too far one way or the other. If you kink it really far this way, it's gonna be very difficult to get that bar to sound out cleanly. And if you kink it the other way, it's gonna to start to hurt right here after a while and you don't want that. So my wrist is more or less straight. It's a little bit curved up, but not too much. So keep that in mind. And the last little bit for a technique tip is to kind of roll your finger back just a little bit so you're not playing on the fleshy bottom part of your index finger, you're doing more on the side. That can help to get those notes to ring out a little bit more clearly. As you think about these technique tips, you wanna take some time and just focus on that bar and building strength there. So no matter where you put that bar, all the way up and down the fretboard, it'll sound good. And that's the main exercise for step one, is to just take your bar and move it up and down the fretboard. Just focus on that, don't worry about anything else. If it sounds bad, readjust and go through the technique tips. And you don't have to do this for a long time, three to five minutes a day on a consistent basis will really help you see some success and progress with building your bar strength. Now, if your guitar is abnormally hard to play, if the strings are really high off the fretboard, I would encourage you to take your guitar to your local music store and have them set it up to play as easily as possible without buzzing. And if they can't do it for you, maybe they'll have a reference for you for a pair person that can make that happen. Step number two for playing bar chords is to learn how to make the open chord shape that you're gonna be using with fingers other than your first finger. And to give you an example of what I mean by this, let's take a look at an open E major chord. Most people play this chord with their first, second, and third fingers, but since your finger, your index finger right here is gonna be making a bar, you have to kind of get an alternate version of that and play it with your second, third, and fourth fingers. That is step number two. You have to be able to go to whatever open chord shape that bar chord you're working on is using with your second, third, and fourth fingers. If you're still making it one finger at a time, kind of like this, you need to work on getting that down to where you can go right to it. And it's gonna be the exact same process as when you started learning your open chords. You know, you have to get your fingers in place, memorize the shape, make sure that you're not muting the neighboring strings. And to do that, you come right on the very tips of your fingers, right behind the frets. And just be aware of, you know, what fingers are maybe brushing up against the neighboring strings, muting them. 
So just leave it on there for 20 to 30 seconds and make sure it's really clean. Check each individual note and take it off. Treat it just like you're learning a new open chord. Building that new coordination with the second, third, and fourth fingers instead of the first, second, and third fingers. And just make this part of your daily practice, you know, for three, five, ten minutes a day until you can absolutely go to that open E chord without even thinking about it. Step number three is where things really start to come together. Hopefully you've put in some time in your practice working on just getting your bar clean and strong. And then you put in some time working on your open chord shape with your second, third, and fourth fingers, in this case for the E. Now we gotta put them together. So the idea behind step number three is to start with your bar first, put that on. And then once you have that there, put your shape on. And then check all of the technique tips that we've gone over, you know, for the bars. My finger right behind the fret, are my creases on my finger not stopping me from getting a good bar sound? You know, is my elbow in? Am I kinking my wrist too much or not enough? Is it straight? Then for the shape, am I muting any neighboring notes? Am I right behind the frets? All of those types of things. So that's step number one of step number three is bar, then shape. And just do that over and over again. Take it off, bar, shape. And do that until you're comfortable with it. And the second half, of step number three is to put the shape on first and then the bar. And we're kind of cross training here, so shape, bar. And just do that over and over again. And you can alternate between bar, shape, and shape, bar. And the goal of this is to get your coordination to the level where you can go right to the entire thing all at once. And you're building your strength and working on your technique all at the same time. So take some time, one or two weeks, and just work on getting that shape on the fretboard. You know, starting with the bar, then the shape, then the shape, then the bar, with the ultimate goal of just being able to go right to it. And really the only thing left to work on after that is moving that shape around the fretboard. So once you're feeling pretty comfortable with it, just try and move it up and down the fretboard. Once you can play whatever bar chord shape you've been working on cleanly and move around the fretboard, it's really important that you apply that to music. That way you can have some fun and then you have a reward for all the hard work you've been putting in to learn these bar chords. Now, as a bonus step, step number four would be apply your bar chords to a song. And it can be any song you like. I'd suggest maybe a CCR song because they're fun and pretty easy to get into. Maybe Have You Seen The Rain, that's a good starting point. That's it for this video. If you apply these steps and tips on a regular basis in your practice time, you will be able to overcome the challenge of bar chords. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Guitar Toolbox. It's my collection of 50 free step-by-step -step lessons that address a lot of really common problem areas for players, and it helps you overcome these areas through fun jam tracks and practical musical applications. You can find out more about that at guitarlessons.com toolbox and it's free. I'll see you later.